right now we're on page 190, and we want to review very briefly the neural innervation of the heart. And there are both sensory neurons and motor neurons associated with the heart. An example of a visceral sensory neuron uh, that is associated with the heart are noxiceptors. Now, noxiceptors or nociceptors are, uh, are pain sensory neurons. Those are sensory neurons associated with the modality of pain. So we have talked about angina pectoris. Angina pectoris is caused by myocardial ischemia. When heart muscle cells aren't getting enough oxygen, they are not able to produce as much energy in the form of ATP as usual. This injures the cells that they cannot perform or op function at the, in the normal way. And therefore, these injured cells, their ischemic, start to release chemical mediators of inflammation, including kinins and prostaglandins. We know that kinins and prostaglandins stimulate, activate pain sensory neurons. Pain sensory neurons are really a type of chemoreceptor. And this, these, this information about pain is then sent from the heart up to the brain. Now we do know that, interestingly, the pain that originates from the heart is not perceived as coming from the heart. It is perceived as coming from the left shoulder radiating down the medial side of the left arm. This is called a referred pain. And we've talked about that previously. In addition to sensor, visceral sensory neurons uh, sending information from the heart to your central nervous system, there are, of course, the parasympathetic and sympathetic autonomic motor neurons uh, that innervate the heart and allow modulation of uh, the heart activity. Let's remind you real quickly, on page 102, on 102 we are reminded of how there are both parasympathetic and sympathetic autonomic motor neurons uh, that innervate the heart. You, of course, recall that parasympathetics are uh, controlling the uh, internal organs, including the heart, and they rest and digest state. They release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine onto the heart, which activates the so-called muscarinic acetylcholine receptor sites. On the other hand, the sympathetic autonomic motor neurons are activated during states of stress, and they release the neurotransmitter norepinephrine, an adrenaline-like neurotransmitter uh, that activates the adrenergic receptor sites on the heart. And in fact, we have learned that the specific identity of those adrenergic receptor sites on the heart is that they are beta-1 adrenergic receptor sites. Returning back to page uh, 190, so the autonomic motor neurons, uh, both parasympathetic and sympathetic, specifically synapse, they innervate, they synapse at the SA node and AV node of the heart. The parasympathetics reach the heart via the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10. Inside the vagus nerve are hundreds of thousands, millions of parasympathetic autonomic motor neurons, some of which branch off the vagus nerve and uh, uh, extend out to the heart. <clears throat> now, we indicated that the parasympathetics have the effect of slowing the heart rate down. That's called bradycardia. Now, how do the parasympathetics slow down the heart rate? Well, again, we remind you that parasympathetics release acetylcholine onto the heart. The acetylcholine activates the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor sites. But what it actually causes to happen is it causes an opening up of ligand-gated potassium ion channels. You see, acetylcholine acts like an inhibitory neurotransmitter on the heart, causing the heart rate to slow down. Let's remind you that most of the potassium in our body is inside of our cells. There are also negative charged proteins uh, inside the cell. If the acetylcholine causes an opening up, an increased permeability to potassium, an opening up of ligand-gated potassium ion channels, and positive charged potassium start to flow out of the heart cells in the SA node, uh, that actually causes the inside of the cells to become more negatively polarized. That's called hyperpolarization. And that a result of hyperpolarization is a slowing down of uh, the firing off of action potentials. When uh, cells are hyperpolarized, they are less likely to fire off action potentials. <clears throat> we can see this on page 191, the next page. 
On page 191, uh, here we see uh, what we're monitoring the uh, pacemaker activity of pacemaker cells in the SA node. Uh, they exhibit a spontaneous depolarization and fire off an action potential. But you'll notice that under vagal stimulation, in other words, when the parasympathetic autonomic motor neurons are activated or a parasympathomimetic drug is given, that actually causes hyperpolarization of the cells as potassiums go out of these pacemaker cells, and by hyperpolarizing them, that slows down the firing off of action potentials, causing a slowing down of the heart rate. Incidentally, on the previous page, page 190, on page 190, the definition of bradycardia is a heart rate slower than, less than 60 beats per minute at rest. In other words, if somebody had a resting heart rate of 65 beats a minute, that is still considered within the normal range. But you should not have a resting heart rate slower than 60 beats a minute. I will mention, as a side note, there are some uh, extreme athletes, marathon runners, who have such enlarged hearts uh, because of cardio exercise that they have resting heart rates slower than 60 beats a minute. But they're the exception. They're highly trained athletes. If any of the rest of us had resting heart rates slower than heart, uh, 60 beats a minute, we would have a pathology called bradycardia. We'll talk about how to treat that later. Now on the next page, page 191, on page 191, uh, we of course also have sympathetic autonomic motor neurons uh, that innervate the uh, heart. Now the sympathetics, of course, uh, speed up the heart rate increase uh, electrical activity of the heart. Uh, they are activated during states of stress. How do the sympathetics cause these effects? Well, sympathetic autonomic motor neurons release norepinephrine, and uh, norepinephrine as well as epinephrine activate those beta-1 adrenergic receptor sites on the heart at the SA node. And uh, these uh, neurotransmitters, norepinephrine and epinephrine, act as excitatory neurotransmitters on the heart. In other words, like all excitatory neurotransmitters, they open up ligand-gated sodium ion channels, and when positive charged sodium ions start flowing into the heart cells, that tends to cause them to depolarize. As they depolarize, that causes the firing off of action potential, so that increases uh, the heart rate. We can see that above, on page 191, so here we see this pacemaker activity of the heart cells in the SA node, and with sympathetic stimulation, in other words, activation of sympathetic autonomic motor neurons or the administration of a sympathomimetic drug, uh, that actually, it causes depolarization, and that increases the frequency of action potentials. That increases the firing off of action potentials and the speeding up of the uh, heart rate. Now we indicated that the definition of tachycardia is a resting heart rate faster than 100 beats a minute. We all exhibit tachycardia uh, when we are running. So when we run, we expect our heart rate to be faster than 100 beats a minute. But you should not have a resting heart rate where you're just sitting and watching television. You should not have a resting heart rate faster than 100 beats a minute. So in other words, if somebody had a resting heart rate of 95 beats a minute, that is certainly on the fast side, but it's not considered outside the normal range until it exceeds 100 beats a minute. So in other words, as we indicated, the normal range for a resting heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats a minute. As long as the resting heart rate falls within that range, uh, that's considered uh, within the normal range. Now sympathetic autonomic motor neurons releasing uh, the catecholamine neurotransmitters not only speed up the heart rate, called tachycardia, but they also increase the speed, the velocity at which the action potential travels through the AV node. We'll have more to say about that. And the sympathetic autonomic motor neurons releasing catecholamines, as we've learned, increase myocardial contractility. Myocardial contractility means the force of contraction. And we're going to be learning how increasing the force of contraction increases what's called stroke volume. We'll get into uh, that. So the sympathetic autonomic motor neurons have three primary actions on the heart. 
They speed up the heart rate, called tachycardia. They uh, increase the speed at which action potentials travel through this AV node area. And three, they increase myocardial contractility, the force of contraction.